Thank you, Caroline, and thank you to our two guest presenters there. Um, yeah, very interesting, very good. So, as Caroline has kindly said, um, we looked across what is it that our our customer base uses Prism for, and we've actually seen some really good examples there um, from our two guest speakers. And what I wanted to do today, I've just sort of pulled together kind of six features, functions that you may or may not be using. I'm just going to talk about them, um, a little bit of an overview. At the end, I'm going to show you where you can actually go and learn more about this. We've got some great uh, material available for you to go and look at as well. Um, so let's dive straight in. It says as it's slow. there we go. So we talked about our theme today. Um, what can you do to level up? Now, obviously, I'm not going to sit and talk about this in great detail, but what we're really trying to do is focus on these more top areas, level three, four, and five, about how can you analyze, optimize, engage, transform, empower, empower and inspire. So just think about those themes as we kind of go through. And what you've got to consider is the things I'm going to talk about and display today, there is one bit on Teams that you may or may not be taking as a module. But apart from that, this is included. These are functions that you have available to you. So the first thing that I want to talk about today is widgets. So some of you may use widgets, some of you may not. Um, widgets, in essence, are you'll build an analytics query and you'll save the widget. Um, now, there's many reasons why widgets are beneficial, and I will demonstrate a couple of widgets because of some of my demos into the system today, um, I've pre-built the widgets for the demos. So look, if you go into analytics and have to type in again and again the criteria that you want to do, but it's the same sort of report, you can build a widget. So you build your query, create the widget. Next time you go in, it's there. You just click on execute, it runs. Um, and it will give you the information that you want. You can schedule exports as well. So obviously, uh, generally speaking, you'd schedule those exports via email from the widget. Um, but if you are hosting Prism yourself rather than us hosting it for you, obviously you could actually decide that you want to deliver it direct to some network storage. Um, but from the email and network storage point of view, obviously it's in your control of who gets that information and, and when, what's the frequency. Um, with Prism, again, you have your administrator functions. Now, some of you may, you may all be administrators. Some of you may actually use our security control within Prism. Um, but you can have a team of administrators that can construct and distribute the widgets for you. Um, so that you can give those to any user to see. You can choose what they can see, what they can't see. But it does mean that you don't necessarily then need to train users. So if you've got a central team and every week Dave comes along and says, oh, can I please have this? Well, actually, you could build that for Dave, give him Prism access, and he just literally three clicks, he's at his widget, he runs it, gets the information he wants. Yeah, and then he can choose how he wants to export it once he's got it there as well. So a really good function of that is, is you know, not have everyone necessarily having to be knowledgeable. Um, you can easily modify the date. I think that speaks for itself. So, you know, if you want to change the data, you can do that in the widget. And again, I, I will show you how that works in a minute when I actually do, do an analytics demo. Um, it's got a standard user interface. So similar to other websites, you know, it's kind of very intuitive, user friendly. So, you know, you can filter on columns on, on um, specific columns. You can export the data easily. So again, it's one button click. There you go, data exported. Um, and you know, if you wanted to, you could take it as a CSV. Um, it's one of the options. You can put that into a third party application if you wanted to analyze the data in a different way. Um, and as I said, you can save it. You know, really the main benefit, you can save that, enable the reuse of it, particularly where you've got a very complex query. And again, when I do my analytics demo in a minute, you will see a complex query um, and the other thing is you can save it as a favorite in your browser. So you save it as you click on it. Yes, you'll have to sign into Prism, but once you're signed in, it's there. Um, just see a question pop up. Um, we will come back to questions in a minute, if that's okay. I'll go through, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll do a section. So centralized information storage. So this is an area I, I'm, I'd be surprised if most customers have actually heard of. So. Um, we offer this area within Prism where you can store a lot of extra information. And again, I'll do a little demo on this in a minute of some of the things you can store. 
Um, you can have labels and information to aid in your searching, and that's what I'm actually going to do a demo on. Uh, the screens are customizable, so you can choose what information you hold in there. Um, it's available to anyone with Prism access. So obviously within your organization, those that you choose to have access, they can go in and see. So, you know, you can store your contract numbers, contracts, renewal dates, location, network information. Um, ben mentioned storing IP addresses earlier. You know, this is an area where you can store those and then it will help you when you're doing your searching or you're building your reports. Um, custom fields, so you can have up to eight custom fields. You can edit these, you can make them searchable, exportable. Uh, they're available on most network-based screens. So again, when you're holding your information and then custom number in plan sets, it allows you to import a set of PSTN numbers. You can apply labels and you can search for those in analytics. So we'll just link that to a specific example. So if I just go back into our demo system. So for information storage, so I, I've just stored this in charging. So I mentioned customer number in plans just now. Uh, this is our this is a demo one, a sample one that we've got set up. And what you can see is we've imported this. So we've imported just a basic set of information, phone number. But the other thing we've done is in a specific field is we've prefaced everything with TGR. So to say it's Tiger. You, I'll show you in a minute why that's relevant because we actually use that for a search query. But very simple level, you can see it was just a few clicks. Um, obviously in here, I can import this type of information and I can hold it in here basically. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about analytics now and then I'll do a quick demo that ties in kind of those three subjects together. So I think, you know, what you've got to understand if it's in the system, you can use it and you can understand what's what's going on. Um, so analytics is very user friendly. You know, for those that haven't been in and used it, you're just running reports. But we have something like 1,240 different fields that you can search on and you can set criteria around. But what I want to do is explain these four areas first. So you've got the dimensions. So this is the attributes containing fact data, such as product information, name, services. I'm not going to read everything it says there. You know, we'll make this available afterwards, but in essence, it's yeah, it's hard information. So a phone number, a model, a name, that type of information. You've then got your measures. So these are different attributes. So these contain integer values such as seconds, cost, uh, count numbers. So these are things that change basically. And now what we can do with these areas is we can use these measures to do uh, functions such as an average or a sum. So what's the average phone extension cost you, for example? Um, and then you've got group filters. So if it filters data after the rows are grouped together. And again, I will show you an example of this. So this is again, you can sum the amount of legs, for example. You can um, you can look at all called digits with a filter of outgoing. So these are your group filters. So these are things that you might want to Outgoing is a great example. I'm not interested in incoming calls. I just want to see outgoing calls. Now, the word I always struggle with, parenthesis. So these are also known as the round brackets. Again, I'll show you the query. You'll see we actually write them as round brackets. Um, this is the most common way that we do these things. Now, these are used for grouping of different values and equations together. Um, and they're used to group terms together or specify the order of operations in an equation. So let me go back into, so that's that's what the four measures are within PRISM and, and that's how we use them within analytics. So if I go into our telephony analytics, I mentioned to you widgets. So this is a widget that I prepared earlier. Um, very blue P at the moment there for you. Here's one I prepared earlier. Um, but yeah, so what I've done, and I'll, show, and I'll go back into um, edit. And when I go into edit, you'll be able to actually see the query I've made. So um, what I've done is I've, I've said where the call outcome or the call outcome. And again, if I show you in here, so if the call outcome is busy or no answer, 
and the call outcome is connected or connected, then I want to see the call label and the call label contains TGR. Now, if you remember, I showed you that in our centralized information storage. So TGR, now what that means is I'm only going to be searching for Tiger people, basically, um, that have that label. And I'm just running it for the month of uh, May. OK, and then we talked uh, about parenthesis. So again, I'm now using a sum and I'm using is greater than. OK, so the talk time I've said is greater than one hour. So what I'm looking here for is it's a tiger person where there was busy or no answer. Uh, it was connected and then I'm going to run this query. And it's going to show me those people. And again, because I've got it as a sum, it's pulled it all together. So I'm showing you many things here. This is a widget. These are the different, if I just jump back to this screen, these are the different types of dimensions, measure, group filters, and parenthesis that I'm showing you here as well. Um, and I'm also showing you from the centralized information storage why we label things and why it comes in handy. So as I say, using all of that criteria there for what is actually quite a simple query, I can pull back this information. And obviously, as I've said, in here, there are about 1,240 different columns uh, or different filters that we can put in. And some of those are dimensions and some of those are measures. And you can see the measures in, uh, sorry, where it can work as a filter in red. So we do that for you. So anything that you want to look at, um, you can basically search. Uh, it will, so if I just search the word talk, I've got call talk time in seconds, talk time, talk time in seconds. So it will start pre populating and you can add them to your query. Okay, just go back into my presentation mode. So that's analytics. Now, alerts, in fact, I mean, alerts have been mentioned in our customer presentations there. I just wanted to remind people that they're there. Um, look, I mean, fraud was mentioned, it was heavily talked about hacking, misuse, um, proactively alerting is what you can do for all of these defined conditions. Um, so this is one area that this is not part of the standard license and, and you will have to have the alert in the tile. So you speak to your, um, your vendor, your partner, or to your Tiger account manager. But we just wanted to throw in a few examples of alerts. Now, I'm not going to demo this one. There is a detailed tutorial. Um, here's the link for that here, and it's actually a slide later on as well. Um, but look, simple things. Calls over five pound. So, you know, a single call costing more than five pound and including call detail. It's actually quite hard to spend five pounds on a phone call these days. Um, you know, calls over a hundred pounds, another example we gave. So, you know, there are, I think there's a group of islands down oh, in the Indian Ocean, somewhere like that, which is the most expensive calls. And it's something like £3.50 a minute to call one of their numbers. Um, but the point is, it's actually quite hard to spend over £5, let alone over £100. But you can turn that on and you could look for individual calls. You could look for, um, by extension, you could do some of the group, group of, uh, and sums that we've just talked about. So you could say, is an extension spending more than £100 a day, a week, a month? And you can get that alert produced. You can send it to the right people so that they can investigate why is a lot of money being spent on that. Calls to 999. You know, do you want to see, are there people calling 999? And we've said 999, but obviously you've got 112 as an alternative number for 999. You've got 101, 111, 105, 106. You know, there's a myriad of numbers that you may want to report on there at a very simple level. Um, trunk alerting capacity. So, for example, you know, if we calculate that you see 95% of your maximum concurrency capacity, might be something that you want to alert against. Um, destination labels. So, looking at totals to a specific destination label. So, again, if, um, sorry, bear with me. Technology moment. My uh, bar doesn't want to disappear at the bottom. Right, there we go. Um, so, destination labels, yeah. Um, again, you know, is there a specific country, group of numbers that you want to see phone? Um, and Teams feedback. So, you know, a team feedback. So, um, within Microsoft Teams, again, Ben mentioned it earlier, when you finish a Teams call, 
Uh, not every time, but on a not infrequent basis, you get a little pop-up box. We actually encourage our staff within Tiger to rate the quality of the call. So if anybody rates it as a one, um, we actually get an alert that says this was rated as a one. And then we can go in and we can look at the quality of the call, the quality of the equipment that we're using, those types of information. So slightly different case, but yeah, you could absolutely go and rate on things like that as well. Okay, and that takes us nicely talking about teams into employee wellbeing engagement. Now, look, conscious that you can use the employee wellbeing ideas that I'm going to talk about here for actually where you've got normal telephony as well. But I wanted to talk about it with teams because as most organisations, we're hybrid here at Tiger. Um, some have gone fully remote as part of it. Um, you know, do you know that your staff are engaging? Have you got concerns? Have you got worries? Is there a lot of out of hours work going on that perhaps wasn't? I think historically you shut down your laptop and you went home. Now where your laptop is always there and it's open and you're working in front of you, times have changed. So I want to talk about well-being and, and actually how can Prism help you with, with employee well-being. You know, if you're worried someone's working too much, are they not engaging, as I mentioned just now, you, know, you can help understand with a query of, of kind of what are they doing. Um, staff complaining that NS Teams isn't working. Again, we, we, we talked about this, you know, you can check the quality, you can check the equipment that they're using. Um, you know, you might have provided a, um, a really nice laptop and headset, for example, uh, and perhaps the employee's just not using them and then they're, or they're trying to do everything off their phone and they're just saying it's not working, it's terrible, or my camera's broken, or, you know, all of these things can be checked and looked at to actually understand, is the user using the system as you defined, as you wanted them to use it? Um, and I'll just show you a very quick example of where actually you could look at something like this. So again, if I go into analytics within Teams, um, and I've prepared the, the widget for this again already. Um, so what I'm actually showing here, again, if I go into edit, just so you can see, what I'm actually looking here is not between nine to six. So if there's a company, if you sort of recognize that 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. is normal working hours, so I'm not looking for anything between those hours, where the calling name display name is not blanks, so i.e. we know who the call was. And then I'm looking at the sum of the sessions and I've said I want it to be greater than two. OK, and again, I've looked at this for May. So what I'm asking here, is, this, is there any people that outside of the hours of nine till six are having a lot of calls? And we've got three, one's our main, main number. We've got James and we've got Matt. Now, I look at that and I go, OK, that's all right, because those are the two people that enact most change within the organisation. And actually, a lot of their work is scheduled out of hours. So it's OK. But if let's talk about good old Dave again, if Dave's name came up and Dave should only be working nine to five and he's got 50 calls out of hours, what's he doing? You know, is that something you should be worried about, something you should be concerned about? So but it's just one example of where you can query this information to look at. Is, is there a lot of people now? Obviously, you could flip that around if you want to talk about employee engagement. Are you worried that you don't hear from an employee? You don't think they're working in the morning? Change the hours. You can run that type of query nice and easily as well. OK. So last quick slide that I'm going to do before we hand back. Um, scheduled reports. Um, so scheduled reports, these are great. You know, you build these in the background. You tell the system when you want it to execute them for you, and it will deliver the results directly to your inbox or if you prefer to someone else. So these are uh, where the criteria doesn't change. Build it, schedule it, leave it to run. So if you want a daily, weekly, monthly report and or somebody within your organization does and they're gonna want it every time, this is the area for you. And again, we've got a demo in the demo section anyway. Um, so look, you can, if it's to look at add an email to the directory, back scheduling, um, we can do a more detailed session on that. That's quite an interesting um, session that you can look at as well. Um, you can replicate existing reports, so you can just copy them. Um, you can view up to five historical reports without running them again, so those are stored in the system for you. It puts less demand on, on your prison administrator for ad hoc reporting as well if you schedule them. Um, and it also puts less demand on the system. So 
Um, yeah, just remember you've got scheduled reports. It's a great function. You can use them, you can build them, build and forget, just let them run. And, and again, it takes away that kind of extra work. Okay, so last slide from me. And again, this will all be shared out afterwards. So it's need more information or help. Um, you can go to tiger.io, get hyphen started. Um, we've got loads of help videos on there. There's loads of documentation on there as well. Um, go and have a look, have a browse. I mentioned a couple of things I've mentioned. There are detailed videos, some of them are half an hour long, but if you want to go and refresh yourself on how you do something, how you build something, how you create something, go and have a look there um, and it will take you through it. So Caroline, any questions for me to pick up please? Well, I've handled a couple as we went along. I don't think there's anything we need to, to focus on too much at the moment. There's quite a few questions around specific income and call analysis, getting the right um, widgets, the right fields, the right call leg and call flag information. So I really would encourage you in the first instance to have a look at some of that self-serve information as well to, to kind of just get some good ideas, but absolutely we can cover that in terms of um, some of the other reports and filters that are in the system for you. There's a commonality with um, some of the uh, favourite widgets as such, and we're saying about being able to import some of those, and I know there's a knowledge share available for those as well, also from the, the support area. So an awful lot of that we're, I'm hoping we will actually see come through in some of that self-serve support information. But um, as we go through, I kind of want to cover some of the other questions that we've had in the Q&A at the end, based right. on some of the other support information we've got coming up. Last one is from Callum. Mentioned before, but the schedule reports hang a few times a year. Is there a functionality to cancel all jobs? Um, I can't remember that one. Let's come back to you on that one, Callum. Yeah, let, let, yeah, yeah. I, I would like to confirm before answering yeah. That. I know we can do it in the back end, mm -hmm. uh, and, and what I would say, Callum, and, and for anyone else, if you've got problems like that, do make sure you log, log in tickets with us. Um, you know, even if the ticket is, please just cancel them, I don't need them at the moment anyway. Log a ticket with us, we'll get it done for you, that's what we're here for. Yeah, 100%. Right. Could you do me the, um, perfect, thank you so much. Right, thank you very much. I will, um, I will draw. Good in a bit. Uh, in preparation for the next presenter. Thank you, everyone. Very much appreciated, Richard. 